a very serious discussion. I'm not comfortable in front of audiences. <laughs> so, so it's going to be a tough, it's going to be a tough dialogue. Hey, thanks so much for joining. Hey, Todd, when you get a chance, can you close that door? Can you close the door when you get a chance? Is it, can you close the door when you get, thanks. It's a lot of background noise, you know. Um, thank you so much for joining. Uh, what I would hope we would do in the next, uh, I believe it's only 40 minutes or so, is maybe kind of do a little journey together. You know, it's always nice to do retrospectives, not just code, but in life, right? <laughs> and kind of think about uh, where we've been uh, as a community uh, and where as a community we are headed and also give some perspective from our clients uh, where we think we might want to focus on, okay? And so the way we're going to kind of divide this between uh, myself and, and Dr. Mo here, we call him Dr. M, uh, is, is I'll, I'll do kind of the community upfront stuff, a little context setting, and then maybe get into some of the, the uh, you know, where we are and where we're headed, and then Mo will give a, I think, a very well-grounded perspective on a lot of our clients and what they're doing and how we're helping them, but also hopefully focus the aperture, right? Because in OpenStack, the past couple of years, it really has been about focusing that aperture. Yeah. It's been about users, right, and developers. We used to call that the OpenStack way, right? Do you all remember back when, uh, you know, for those of you who have been involved, how, how many of you have been involved with OpenStack for four years? Okay, five years. Or less of you, three years. Two years. Ah, very good, one year. Ah, very good, very good. So th this will be good for everybody. So, yes. <laughs> well, back when, when, you know, when we kind of, as, as a group, a collective of kind of open stackers started this, I remember you know, I walked in uh, and I had a conversation with Jonathan at Rackspace, who's still at Rackspace, and, 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 and Mark was there. And I said, hey, you know, let's do something special. You all got this great community, you know, Rackspace, a bunch of folks. You know, maybe we can kind of create a foundation and get a lot of energy around this. And, and uh, you know, at the time, there was a lot of things going on, right? You know, Cloud Stack, Eucalyptus, a whole bunch of stuff. And, and, uh, and you know, hats off to the Rackspace folks in the community because said, yeah, you know what? Open governance, right? Creating a meritocracy, a division between church and state, right? Where perhaps vendors can support the organization, but the decisions are made by you all, the people, the community, right? That just might work. And then we can scale the so-called open stack way. And if you fast forward from that moment in time, where essentially it was basically six vendors tried to kind of cre help create this movement. And then you add all of you who entered. And where we are now, it's, it's simply mind-blowing. And what we have done for society, for the industry, um, for technology is, is simply uh, unbelievable because OpenStack is the ubiquitous open source infrastructure as a service platform, period, hands down. I mean, so a round of applause to you all. Thank you for those of you who've been here, right? Now, but with great power comes what? Awesome responsibility, right? We have a responsibility because when you think about what we've been designing in OpenStack, right, um, especially initially, you know, in those days, we were really thinking about on-premise, right? Capability behind your four walls, compute, storage, networking. We, we had a really good architecture, right, Mo? You know, we were mm -hmm. very modular, uh, you know, allowing an ecosystem of partners, allowing well-defined interfaces. Yes, I know we've got still lots to do in these places, but, but you know, we kind of had that in mind. And then we kind of started to transition as a community into, into understanding what this meant uh, in, in a public cloud context. And then most recently, right, what does this mean in the hybrid context, connecting the left and right-hand side? But we never forgot about skills. You know, I walked through the, the floor, and you have companies like IBM, Mirantis, all of you, right, who have skills to help clients accelerate. This is hugely important. As a community, we need to be able to serve, serve the hunger, right? Everyone wants a Big Mac, so you gotta make those Big Macs faster, right? And you do that by getting more people that could help implement things. So that's really important. But it's also very important that, as, uh, for those of us in the community to understand, that we can't be siloed, right? So if you are focused on, where's Brad? I'm looking for Brad. <laughs> He's like hiding from me. If you're focused on Keystone, right, you can't just focus on Keystone. You have to know what's going on in Horizon, right? For example, we'll talk about that, right? 
you, know, you, have, to, you have to have T-shaped skills, right? And, and that, I think, as open stackers, right, uh, is what differentiates us. Because all of us in these projects, right, understand what's happening to our, our left uh, and our right. And by the way, I really do believe that the OpenStack way is the future of open source, okay? And, and I'll get into that in, in a moment. So what's driving then? What's driving a lot of the innovation that's happened in the last three to four, and certainly this last year? And it's the realization that at the end of the day, you know, what we're doing is providing a flexible canvas. Now, just hear me, hear me out for a second, all right? Did you start laughing? Are you laughing at me, Brett? You're laughing. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm just joking. A can so think of a painting, you know? The business folks want developers to build a beautiful painting, a Mona Lisa, right? But in order to do that, you need to have many colors, right? Think of colors as APIs. And you also need to have brushes, lots of brushes. What are those brushes? I don't know, pieces of middleware that you use heat and hot to lay out, right? I don't know. And you also need a canvas. And that canvas, you know, can't be this small. It needs to be able to change. And different than, you know, a typical painting, you need to be able to take an X, X, X sketch, shake it, and change that painting, right? Change the size of the canvas. Change your colors. That is what's been driving us when you look at a flexible infrastructure as a service or a flexible platform as a service, like what we're doing on Cloud Foundry and all the work that we're doing around APIs. That is the context. Because if you combine the ability to have that flexibility, that level of interoperability, whether it's IBM's cloud or anybody else's cloud, right? You give the power to your business folks to compete, be differentiated, and perhaps more importantly, help serve uh, their clients, right? And that's really what's driving all this. And we've always had this kind of in the back of our heads, but the clarity is becoming, is becoming I think, much more crystal for all of us. So now, to this point around, around OpenStack and the future, of open source. So, you know, as, as, for those of us who've been, and I'm young, I mean, I'm just 21, um, and so I'm kind of new to this, but why are you laughing at me? Is this an email to Jonathan? You're telling you're laughing at me? All right. <laughs> you, know, you know, back in the early days of the web, do you, does anyone know why HTML was created? Why, what was the use case for the extensible markup language, XML? It wasn't for config files. Flexibility? No, sorry. I mean, that's what we use it for now. Documentation. Documentation. Yep, very close. SGML, right? DISL. It was for actually disseminating math and physics information. Tim Berners-Lee worked on it to disseminate physics. I cared about math. I was at IBM Research. So I worked with Tim, co-authored a lot of these things, worked on CSS, all these beautiful, where's Chris? Chris, I think, is here. Chris and I were doing lots of fun things. I have hair, though. Isn't that nice? Just saying. <laughs> and, uh, but, but, but see, so it was beautiful times. And, and, and you know, I would argue that it was quite successful because you know, all that we enjoy now is built on these protocols, right? HTTP. We help create Apache, the Apache license. Who doesn't like the Apache license, right? Eclipse. There's so much that happened. It was in a renaissance. It was an IT renaissance. And here we are now, literally 20 years later, I think. Wow. You know, in this renaissance again, but it's very different. And I, I would argue that if we as a community are not successful in OpenStack and the OpenStack way, we're going to have a, a real hard time, okay? Because what's different now is back then it was a bunch of academics. Now it's end users involved in creating the open technology now. The use cases are much more aware. So when we create this stuff, right, you know, and we're, we're in a horizon, you know, half my team's at, you know, these different sessions designing things, right? You know, when we're at the, at, the, at the horizon session or the keystone session or the cinder or whatever, you've got end users with developers, architects, talking about what needs to be built. That is the future of open source, okay? That is the future of open source. All open source efforts that I think that will be successful are those that combine those two things. Because the level of innovation you have, the level of ecosystem, the level of participation is unbounded, right? If not, you're simply creating garbage. I call it garbage code. You know, I used to teach computer science for graduate students, and I go to GitHub, and I literally just get a little ill, 
because there's a lot of garbage, you know? And garbage, it's, it's like we take garbage to the curb, you know? If nobody uses it, it just piles up, right? That's useless. Right? Hashtag what? No bueno. No bueno. Right? You don't want that. Not good, right? And uh, so, so we don't want garbage code. So, so when you look at cloud, you look at data, mobile, analytics, all these areas that are kind of changing the world, this digital disruption mode, right? All of these things is, 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 is driven by open communities. And I would argue, linchpin open communities that have this kind of user open source perspective to it. So now, a little bit on, on OpenStack and IBM. First of all, man, that was a ton of code in this last release. <laughs> Kilo, get it? It didn't work for you? <laughs> Wait, it took you a second to get that? Wow. I, I, was, I thought it was funny, at least at the time, you know, I was like, Kilo, it's a We're ton. We're not in Europe. What? In Europe, they would get it. This is not America. I know. Okay. Oh, that's true, actually. <laughs> That is true. Although there is a target five miles away from here, so. Yeah, that is so okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but, did someone shush me? Is that you, Eric? You just shushed me. <sighs> Those Germans. I know. They're so strict. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Think about it. I mean, 13, the, the, of all the statistics here, the thing that blows my mind is 13% increase in kilo contributors from Juno. <laughs> I mean, think about that. The community not only has grown in participants, but has grown in number of developers. I mean, if there's one picture you're going to take pictures of, this is the one. Because this shows that we have arrived and that people are actually contributing real code, right? This kind of growth is just, I, I've never seen anything grow at this pace. And we've been real proud in IBM. You know, when we helped start this, and we helped create the foundation. In fact, Todd, is Todd here? Like, I'm blind. Yeah, step, out. <laughs> step out. You know, Todd helped write the bylaws and all the that we all follow, right? All the rules and stuff, the code of conduct and all that. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, when we helped start this, um, you know, we, you, you know how many contributors we got, you know, for, for writing a check to create, you know, give Jonathan a job and create all this stuff? You know how much, how much contributors we got for that? We got zero. Zero. Right? We earned our stripes, just like everybody else does. That's beautiful. Separation of church and state. And then very, very proud of the initial work we did, which was mostly directed by our friend Chris at the time. Thank you. And, and, and to where we are now, right? We, we've gone from you know, 50 folks in IBM to close to 500 developers in IBM fully focused on helping OpenStack. Yeah, it helps our products, for sure. Right? We've got OpenStack, and Mo will get into this, on-premise, off-premise, right? managed, dedicated, everywhere in between. So yes, it helps us, but it helps everybody. It's about increasing the market, about increasing the share. Right? I mean, the sheer number of blueprints, close to 70 blueprints that we helped implement and deliver, that's, that's just beautiful. So there's a couple of things in OpenStack that we worked on that I think uh, I wanted to highlight. And then I have two challenges. Okay. And one of them is a physical challenge. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> just want to see if you're awake still. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm going to go a little deeper into some of these in, in three more charts. And Mo, you're on in about four to five minutes. Just so you can okay, start. Ready? So you can start. Okay, to boot up. Start booting <laughs> up. Start the process. Select your hypervisor. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm starting. KVM. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to cover Cinder. Heat, heat and hot. I absolutely love heat and hot. You know, but there's so much confusion around orchestration. People think that you know, the big O orchestration is the same thing. Orchestration's in the eye of the beholder. And what we're doing in Heat and Hot is incredibly important. Because the ability to lay down the technology, manage it, deal with the life cycle, to be able to model real architectures, right? Not just toy applications, but something like, say, SAP, right? Which is a real app business application. In OpenStack, using ideas from the Tosca working group is simply important for enterprise adoption. And the work the teams have done together around that, I'm very, very proud of. Because this helps accelerate the adoption of OpenStack within enterprises, right? Which helps us all. Um, another one is the CLI work, right? I don't know about you, but I still use a lot of command lines myself. 
I get very frustrated with GUIs, although I'll, I'll say nice things about Horizon. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, the work we did in, in, in the CLI and finally having that out there I think is quite important. And I think the most important one, which I don't have a slide dedicated to, which I should, uh, is interoperability. And I'm very, very proud of all the work around DEF Core and especially Ref Stack. Uh, Catherine got the plus one from our team to help lead that, and, and I'm really, really, really excited about that. Um, you know, to, for us to move to the next phase of OpenStack, we need to create that liquid canvas, right? Not just between IBM products, that's, that's good, it, that, that works, but with our competitors, right? I mean, think about it. Let's imagine that you happen to be running OpenStack, I don't know, say Rackspace in the US, that's cool. But then all of a sudden you want to go to Germany, because all small companies want to be big, right? All of a sudden they want to sell something in Germany. But they can't, because Rackspace doesn't have a data center in Germany. <gasps> oh, we've got 40 IBM data centers, software data centers, across the world. Have a couple, in data, a couple in Germany as well. OpenStack everywhere. Now it becomes easier this, to extend your canvas. Why would you want to do that in Germany? Well, there's regulatory reasons. There's a little, you know, locality of data and applications. There's lots of reasons to, to have, you know, not deal with network stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that, that, I think, is probably, between that and heat and hot, very, very important parts of, of where we, IBM, are going to continue to help drive innovation and where I kind of think and challenge you all uh, to look at. On the Cinder side, you know, I think there was two, two really big things that we worked on um, and would love to get more feedback from you all as well. One is around uh, replication and migration of information. Um, I think that's very, very important. We, you know, it's a use case that we get from clients all the time. Um, you know, I'm curious to see if you guys have pr more practical experience from where you've been, uh, and if there's any dialogue you want to have around that. We've got some of the, some of the Cinder folks here. Um, federated identity, and uh, you know, I think we should give a, a, a slow clap to Brad, right? right. Everybody ready? Okay. Slow. <laughs> Brad, 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 Brad. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Brad in the back, um, you know, He's a, he's a nice guy, a nice southern, he's in Raleigh, he's a nice guy, but man, you, you have a big stick. <laughs> you know, the work, the work that he did with everybody around OpenID, uh, around CADF, around making sure that we don't think of security just as an open stack concept, right? Yeah, federated keystone and all of that stuff is really important, right? Uh, being able to have security, you know, essentially seamlessly span on-premise to off-premise or managed dedicated, that's, that's hugely important. But understanding that, well, how does this relate to security context in the platform layer? And what are you doing in Cloud Foundry? Oh, and what about the device? Partnering with Yahoo, right, on, on, the, on the horizon side, for example. People input stuff in, right? It's about thinking across, across those layers. So I think that's some really cool stuff. And of course, horizon. Um, you know, the, I think there's uh, the, the opportunity we have ahead of us for bringing in many, because you know, user interfaces and ways of interacting with systems is like clothing. You know, some people dress very nicely, like me. Some people not so nice. <laughs> I'm not pointing out anything. I'm just saying. I, I don't know why I even looked in that direction. Right? So it's in the eye of the beholder. You know, some people think they look good. <laughs> he doesn't like your shoes. <laughs> I wasn't looking at you, but that's very nice. Um, uh, so, but, but what's important here is the modularity and, frankly, the performance this, with this model view de control decomposition, some of the stuff we're doing with Angular, and the ability to ref refresh pages, right, uh, on the fly. So I think those are all very important things. So before I turn it over to Mo, uh, I'd like to leave you with two, two very, very, very important challenges. If there's anything I've said, you know, that may be interesting, ignore it. Here to go. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. All right. First thing, okay. When it comes to OpenStack and where we're headed, it's important that you look left and right. And we have been doing this as a community within OpenStack. Got it. But here we go to challenge number two. You've got to reach out beyond your community. Because what we are creating here and what OpenStack started is an open cloud architecture, right? Not just compute storage and network, it's containers. It's platform as a service. It's open data with what we're doing with Hadoop. It's Node. It's Couch, right? It's all the different things that are coming together when people try to essentially build an open source based cloud platform. 
I mean, that's an IBM is how we're building our technology, right? All of this is in our cloud. When you use the IBM cloud, you are using this technology in the inside. Not some bolt-on, not some API emulation. It's in there, okay? The web was successful because every modern-day application server has the Apache HTTP code in it. When you type in sap.com, you don't worry about whether you're going to get the page. You're going to get it. It's the same code, right? That's the point. When you use OpenStack, it's the same code. And you need to think beyond that and make sure that the work we're doing in Magnum, right, for working with Docker, right, the work that we're doing in Bosch and Cloud Foundry and getting those APIs and the OpenStack APIs, I'm looking at you now, <laughs> very closely, right, the work that we're doing uh, higher up around the middleware all need to kind of start coming together. And we IBM are doing that. We're in all of those communities, right? We've got lots of developers doing open source, but we're one company, right? All of you open stackers need to think about that too. So with that, Mo, ground us in reality. I'm still booting. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, as I was... <laughs> so, um, thank you, Angel. Thank and you, I Mo. have to say that I uh, want to share with the non-IBM folk in the audience that I definitely am not liked or loved at IBM because they always give me 20-minute slots when they know that I can say nothing in less than 30. And they always put me before lunch. The good news is I haven't eaten lunch, so I'm starving and talking about Big Macs and steaks, that's all I can think of. Forget about the slides. In the next... Um, 15 minutes or so, what I'm going to do is think about that canvas and painting and give it a little bit of flavor based on the clients, the feedback, the work we've done. So when you're thinking about these paintings, not all paintings are created equal. Paintings could be portraits, they could be landscapes, they could be f f photographs and so on and so forth. But Angel put this in a good context, a context that says OpenStack is not just about building private clouds. OpenStack is not just about public clouds. OpenStack is really about a hybrid enterprise, a hybrid environment, a hybrid cloud that brings together new styles of applications, comp composition of infrastructure, connectivity into existing systems, and so on and so forth. What we've learned over the years when we started to talk to many of our clients is that there are many styles of paintings, but four really stood out in the world of hybrid. The first is the one that we all relate to, understood and very much so early on. And it's really around dev test. How can I go and leverage clouds in a context of quickly developing some applications, you know, not, no longer constrain the developer with it's going to take you three weeks to stand, stand up servers, et cetera. And then once I've actually been able to create these dev test environments, et cetera, how do I connect them back into my production systems? That use case continues to exist in a hybrid world. The second one is what we call spillover. It started to become, you know, people call it cloud bursting and all sorts of, you know, names. But from a commercial point of view, people started to say, you know what, standing up a data center is a problem, not just because of skills, but frankly, even simple things like real estate, you know, cooling, heating, energy costs, et cetera. And, you know, I'm not entirely sure if my business venture right into Sydney is going to work out or not. So instead of doing any of this, let me try and you know, use some additional capacity to spill over when I launch that new application in Sydney. And if I decide that it's not going to work, I'm going to scale it back. Make sense so far? No. Come on, guys. Make sense so far? Absolutely. Yeah. Woohoo! Man, that was good. <laughs> the third one is what we are starting to see more and more of. And it's one that I'm personally excited about. It's called the distributed applications. People um, really start to think about applications in the cloud in the same way that they thought about them in the old days. I have an SAP application, it's monolithic, it's top to bottom, it's bound to a certain environment, to a certain architecture. In a cloud world, that is no longer true. The real power of a cloud-based application is that you really start to be able to put some of your front-end logic in a cloud, your back-end logic maybe in your own data center, on some hosted environment. There is a mix and match between uh, run times and so on and so forth. This is becoming very much a real use case, and we'll come and talk to, uh, about it in a minute. And then finally, the new frontier, where really people from a business point of view are starting to look at portability. Now, everybody thinks of the word portability just like orchestration in many ways, but portability has real business meaning. Back to my, our great location, uh, Sydney, it means that I launch an application in here and I want to now launch it in Sydney. The only things I want to be able to change is I want to store the data locally in Sydney or locally in Germany or locally wherever, but I really just want to lift it and get it running in there. So it's 
you know, different stage. I'm having it in pre-production to production. I want to just port it. I have it different systems or have it different geos. How do we enable that? To start with, there are really two dimensions to solving this particular problem. That's where Team IBM has been focused along with the community. Everything we've been doing with you know, the great contributions of the community members have been centered around solving that hybrid problem and enabling it in an enterprise context. The first side of that coin is infrastructure. Now, those of you who have heard me speak on this topic or attended our IBM sessions at prior, you've known me to spend a lot of time talking about this. Today, I'm going to shrink it and really get concise and to the point. Hybrid infrastructure is really where OpenStack started. It became the de facto enabler towards, um, if you like, access, consistency, irregardless of where you are trying to build, deploy, or manage your applications. Whether it is in your own local data center, whether it's in a dedicated environment to you that is off-premises, or whether it's even in a public cloud where you're accessing discrete services as opposed to total environments. We're always used to thinking about environments as everything, a virtual machine with a storage network, et cetera. That is true, but also people are starting to leverage and access things like object stores or discrete uh, block storage, et cetera, as, as services. So OpenStack really have enabled us, and we've been working towards all of the type of capability. Where is Angel? Did he leave? Angel? Oh, oh there he is. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, you're like ah, you know, bowing, so bowing I didn't. Down. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of the stuff that uh, Angel has talked about around Keystone, some of the work that you start to do in terms of Cinder, et cetera, becomes incredible enabling that, um, if you like, from, from an OpenStack uh, core point of view, that consistency across environments. I'm not going to go into more into this. What I'll tell you a little bit is commercially what IBM has done is taken it a step further. When we talk with a lot of our um, enterprise clients, we've heard a few things, and I think you heard them in the keynotes. Just make consuming OpenStack a little bit easier for me, guys. It's still hard, et cetera. And there are a couple of you know, additional features and functions that I really need when I'm starting to roll out an OpenStack-based environment at scale, when I'm really trying to load many, many applications. That comes into two flavors. Number one, how can we take things like a horizon-based cloud management and start to really add the type of features and functions that client wanted? Approvals before you deploy things, a little bit of control, access, all that kind of stuff. So that's where we've invested in adding some value on top of the core OpenStack uh, function. The other area is we took some of our uh, intellectual property in what's known as platform computing. So this is resource scheduling and optimization around placement. And we also made that work and part and part of what's inside of OpenStack. That whole combination is a package that is called the IBM Cloud Manager with OpenStack. You pick up this, you build your own OpenStack environment locally. That stack, OpenStack Community Edition, plus pluggable, pluggable modules that allow you to do a lot of the optimization, placement, et cetera, plus all of the workflows that really help a lot of these clients put this sort of control and governance they want is available. That core stack is what we use throughout the rest of our portfolio. What we introduced last year, and Forrester um, kindly, I would say, uh, ranked us as a leader in, is the new category of dedicated. What we still observed is not every client is able to go and start up OpenStack by themselves. Even when they're starting small and they just want to be able to get going with an experiment or even a small workload. And that's where dedicated came in. We manage it for you. It's running off-premise, but it's isolated to your environment. This has been seeing a lot of traction. I believe, most personal opinion, that the future of private clouds are going to be very much dictated by those dedicated, remotely managed environments versus all of the cost and administration that people will put into standing up their own. It's going to be a hybrid world, but I still believe that's a growing piece. So, We've had a couple of clients. Now, a lot of people, when I put that chart last, last summit, they told me, Mo, where do you think people are? Are they doing more of the build your own? Are they doing a little bit more of the dedicated? And my answer to them is actually no. They're doing hybrid. When you look at what our um, you know, partners and colleagues at Verdata were doing, they quickly started with a dedicated environment, hosted, and they decided that they want to start to bring in some of the applications back within their data centers. They use some feature that we have around a hybrid connector. So they started in that whole dedicated off-premise environment, enabled a little wizard, it configured the region down locally, and now they have a hybrid setup in there. Further, people like SAP are starting to think about OpenStack in a much more scalable fashion. 
I will tell you guys, I talk to press like Angel, I talk to analysts. The level of enthusiasm for what the community has done in terms of scale is incredible. It's great to see Walmarts and TD Banks and others. And what you'll start to see is others like SAP coming. Wouldn't it be awesome for OpenStack if one day we can come and say SAP Cloud runs on OpenStack? That's the work that we're actually doing with SAP. I will tell you, you know, offline we know what their gaps are and we're going to be working with the community and all of our partners to advance those and then we'll do some more even if, if required. And then last but not least is one that is exciting for me because I just talked about context of local and dedicated, but even from a public cloud perspective, the work that we actually did with partners called Kultura and TNT Go um, is the realization of how OpenStack is really built for the next generation cloud applications. So this whole, uh, if you like, streaming service that we just launched in Latin America is taking advantage of OpenStack in a context of both hosted and public services that are starting to mix and match. So if you are in doubt, the intention here is to tell you people are doing hybrid. <laughs> That's my answer from summit to summit. Now, I actually mentioned and said that there are two sides to this coin. Infrastructure was one, and I chose to only spend a few minutes on it because that's where we major. The other is what I want to spend a little bit, few more minutes on today, because this is something that Team IBM is incredibly focused on as a result of where clients are going. To really solve hybrid, you have got to pay close attention to the workload. You can do all you want on the infrastructure. But until you start to think about a workload, you're not going to solve the problem properly. This is a classical e-commerce application. Look at this application. Do we have laser in this thing? No, we don't. Okay. Right up there, you have classical systems of record. ERPs, CRMs, records are sitting there. Do we really believe people are going to throw those things out? Is it even prudent to do that? Absolutely not. They may choose to adopt some SaaS you know, properties for their sales processes, like Salesforce, et cetera, that's OK. But the truth of the matter, these types of large record systems exist. There is new data systems that are starting to build up in their data centers. There is new social applications, Twitters, Facebooks, et cetera, that people are engaging in. There are new types of devices that are being connected into this e-commerce application. I want to be able to actually carry cer certain devices and be able to collect data in terms of pricing metrics, consumption, et cetera. There are mobile applications in which these are being served. All of this is being connected. This is a hybrid application. How do you enable that? Think about this. Do you build all of this application on virtual machines? Do you build all of this application in a new foundry style where you can develop it quickly? Do you build this application in a classical, you know, old three-tier application? Do you build it all in SAP? The answer is it's mixed, absolutely. I want you to tell you this is a real blueprint of a client. And here's the beauty of what we learned through this work. If I can build the UI module, which you guys cannot see, so I'm going to walk on point. If you can build this UI module in containers, then you're going to be able to scale that first module at the pace that everything will hit it. You're going to be able to start to do red-black much faster, right at the UI where the customer is interacting with you. What about your inventory system? Well, you've already invested and written in that. Why don't you create services to integrate into it? What about my wish list or my cart? Well, I've already have a VM running that's built around that. The new style of application, like Angel said, in a cloud-rich environment is one that combines all of these things. And that's where Team IBM is focused. How do you take the work we've done with heat and hot, the work we've done with Foundry, the work we've done with Docker, and start to enable all of this through a single experience that you can build these cloud-rich applications. We call it a cloud fabric. Run it anywhere. Sets of services that are developer, network, storage, compute, using OpenStack, combined with services that allow you to extend functionality, Twitter, pricing, HR, marketing, Watson, analytics, available to you to build those rich applications with two components that are critical, an integration on one side, and the other is a whole DevOps tool chain 
that allows you to iterate on it. This is what is behind the open cloud architecture. This is where we see a lot of the enterprises moving towards. They want that environment that allows them to tie all these things together so they can get into it. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, very good. Let's explore this a little bit further. What you see in here, because I decided to put pictures versus words, is the realization of what I just described. This is IBM's Bluemix environment. If you have not seen it, I really encourage you to go and try it out. Everybody thinks of Bluemix as a foundry-only environment. What you hear, see in here is containers or virtual machines enabled in a context of that rapid application development. What you see in here is clients of ours who are now able to take their open stack and register it inside of that foundry context, inside of that Bluemix framework, where they're saying, here is my object store. Write your applications to it. Nothing speaks better to this than you actually going and seeing it. And what the guys have told me is we're running it in the booth. Is that right? Yeah. And we have some cards in here that if you go to run in the booth and you tweet about it, apparently they're going to give you, that's it. That's the man. If you tweet about it, you're going to get some gifts. And the reason why we're so excited that we're giving give out is this is where we believe, to Angel's point, we've finally reached a level of maturity that we're not worried about does this thing work or not, but we're actually starting to innovate in terms of these applications. Take it a step further. Are we, oh, did I lose a slide? I did. I lost a slide. It's, I lost the slide. What I was going to say is, in this particular context, it's not just IBM services, but it is services and connections that we're working with the rest of the community on. One of the main areas that we're starting to think through is, how do we tackle some of the networking pieces? Because in that context, you're not just building everything inside of just a foundry or an IBM cloud. You're building something on your VMware cloud in here. You're putting it in soft layer in there. And that's, for example, a partnership that we're doing with the Juniper team. If, you, again, you want to see that, it's in our expo, and we can talk to you about it. And finally, which is where Angel really started, to do all of this means that each and every one of those things have to be contributing and part of this open cloud architecture that we're driving to. My time is up. You're, you're giving me the look. <laughs> With that, I hope I sort of gave you a quick flyover around where we're focused, where we're going, and what we're trying to achieve. And hopefully you see that a lot of this is starting to come to life. If anybody wants to go into more client details or more functions, happy to do with that. And last but not least, this is what he is. Angel does this very well, the, the spiritual part. Um, I've been with IBM. Um, this is a little bit of a clue. Yeah, yeah, he's meditating. I've been with IBM uh, a little bit over, actually a little under than half of my living life. That hit me yesterday. And I was like, wow, that's incredible. And what excites me about this time, and people say, how, how can people continue to innovate in this type of environment? And I say to them, What's exciting about this particular time is that it's a time where speed is the currency and innovation matters the most. And in IBM, everybody in this room that I've been working with has been a great innovator. The good news is we're looking for some more folks to come and join us. We've been innovating for 100 years, and I hope that we're going to innovate for 100 years more to go. And we only do that when we bring amazing, passionate people to the table. So if you're not going to go and try the VM in Bluemix, then certainly go and visit uh, our recruitment booth. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.